They got it for uh, Stalling. Stalling. Interesting. Stalling, you got to go toward. You got to make an effort to go towards the goal. It must have warned them, and they didn't do it. Now every possession becomes critical for Hofstra. Langtree will find Judge as they'll get it across. Greg Canella was not happy about that call. He was all over the official. Judge checked from behind as he went toward the cage. They get nothing out of that possession, and we'll get a whistle. Timeout taken by. I oh no, a turnover here. I think it was interference. An interference call by the officials. Quickly, Hofstra put it in play. Now watch. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Langtree <laughs> sweeps, gets picked up by the long pole as he started to go to his right. Now this is Alexander. Alexander with a short stick. Go on him. Against Martins, Alexander got the low shot. They had a backer. 6-11 to go. Hofstra down 6-2. Like, a little thing like that to Barry. He was fading away from the case when he shot it. No power really on the ball. Nope. When you dodge, you gotta look to dump a little bit. Lorano. In behind, Eisenhardt, who got a big goal earlier. Up top, Langtree. Cut off by the long pole. I thought he had a shot there, Bob. Yeah, he did. So Prokoski trying to stop Langtree. Score! Brian Langtree! Good shot. It was still there. Yep. And Hofstra has scored three unanswered goals. 5.48 to go, and Hofstra right now down by three as the Hofstra fans are whooping it up on the far side. You know what the goal, here we go, you see the replay. Just working and working his defensive player turns. Okay, Eric Sopraga just turns and fires the ball low against John Castellacos. You know the goal that's looming really large right now, Barry? That goal that was scored four seconds to go in the half. Absolutely, that Five, late goal. Three. Where I always say, when you're within two goals of a team, you're within 10 seconds of tying a game up. Hofstra will come up bigger. with it here. Richie Langtree. And Hofstra having trouble with the long pole, but they'll regain it. Up now to Ryan Grimes. So the Langtree brothers have brought Hofstra back in this game. Richie and Brian. Remember, Richie scored a shorthanded goal earlier in one of the key games. I think it was the North Carolina game, if I can recall. And now Joe Godina will play it. Hofstra trying to cut a 6-0 deficit down to 6-4, 5-15 to go. And what was it, 5-0 at halftime? The score this half is 2-1 Hofstra, or 3-1 Hofstra. Lorano got in. Lorano, a flag. We're going to get our first penalty, and it's coming up against UMass here. Okay, it's going to be a 30-second penalty. It's a hold. And a holding penalty. Hofstra's man up has hurt them all year. They have not been very effective as they have been operating just about 22% man up, which isn't good. UMass, however, has not been that good man down, surprisingly. They've given up 37%. Uh, They're 63% man down. But we'll see. what One of the biggest man up situations <laughs> for Hofstra all year. I know, this here. is a cliche, but they really have to score now. They'll be right in the ballgame if they score. All right, what about the setup, Bob? They're running a 1-3-2, and really they'll look for ball motion, maybe a cutter. Try to set up Judge, perhaps, on the wing. On the far side, they work it. Langtree whips it behind. This is Brian Langtree. Score! From the outside, Jared Testa has caught Hofstra within two. Six to four with 4.46 to go. Well, I'll oh, tell you baby, don't go away. It's, it's UMass playing not to lose for a quarter. Gradually, the momentum is shifted. You see the replay, good feed. Good hard shot to the far side, bounces over John. John Kesslock's went down to his knees a little too early. Right there. Testa at 10-14 man up after Langtree had scored at 9-12. Eisenhardt at 5-16. Four four yep. quarter goals by Hofstra. You know, we go back to what we talked about earlier, Mike Kandel. They North Carolina started, I'm sorry, UMass started playing not to lose. They started to play very conservative, and that's hurt him. Joe Godina coming up with the ball. Down low, big save on Lorano. Scramble for the ball and Casalakis has That is a huge save. play by Casalakis. That was perhaps the play of the game if UMass goes on to win. Now Sokolowski will bring it down. Hofstra dominating faceoffs here in the fourth quarter. And they trail six to four, a lot of time left. 4.14 to go. Sokolowski. That's a momentum breaker. Yep. Because they, may, because they don't have to give up the ball now. Grande, remember they got called for a stall earlier. They work it outside. Grande with that hard shot, good save by Spruitt. Hofstra being aggressive, flag on the play here. 
Let's see what the call is going to be. Appears to be against Blue. Well, tough to pick it up from here. I think it was against Delgado, but I'm not, I'm yeah, not sure what he had box. it for. Delgado's in the box for a slash. They haven't announced it. It appears to be a slash. I know you want to be aggressive in a situation, but you, that's a key penalty with 3.56 to go down by two. It really takes a minute off the clock, perhaps. You know when the attorney saw, uh, the, uh, the attorney, the, uh, the official saw the man on the ground, Delgado was a little too aggressive with the guy on the ground. He protected him. Key man up here, UMass has operated 26% man up. Off on the wing, Costello. Work it outside. Grande, Costello. Kennedy working the point behind, number 11. Bounce. They didn't get a shot, Bob. Nope, never got a shot. That is, is playing not to. That is playing not to lose. Yep. Not to lose, and it's only a two-goal game. It's, it's only a 30-second penalty. There, it must have been a hold. Yep. So teams are all even right now. Clock down to 3:08. Hofstra down two. They've got to force a turnover. They've got to be aggressive. Right now, they hand the ball to their best player, Brendan Glass. He's been held to one goal today. Like I said, Barry, they're within 10 seconds of tying the game up. They get the ball down and score a goal. Get a face off, they can, they can tie it up. Clock at 2.48, so they've effectively had the ball for a minute and a half here. Langtree trying to stop the play. Man got inside, bounced it wide, they had a backer. Now, two minutes, they've got to keep it in the box. If you're uh, UMass, so I think that Hostel might put a little more pressure on them, force them out. I was just going to say, I, I, I would run, run with a short stick on me and, and just give the ball up if I yeah. were an attackman with a long stick on me. Jane Negus was the last uh, shooter, number 41. Got in close and missed it out of Ward Melville High School. Five goals on the year. Mike Candell, want to thank Mike for joining us. He's got to head down, do his job as a Newsday Long Island reporter. We'll read his story tomorrow and enjoy it. Thanks for helping out, Mike. Here's Brendan Glass. Clock down to 2.25. Hofstra's got to force something here, Bob. They need the ball. Well, Barry, they do. They've got to force the man to make either a bad pass or a bad shot. Their comeback has been a stirring comeback, but they're still down two. 2.08 to go. Trying to take the ball away, Richie Langtree. Good possession by Grande. This is Del Percio. Under two minutes to go. So now the uh, stall warning in effect as well. He's got to keep it in the box right now. So now you can play real aggressive defense. Kennedy. And if you're Mark Spruard, you come out and double the guy. Yeah, you got to do something here. Kennedy keeps possession, 140 to go. You know what you play, Barry? You gotta play cutoff. Everybody gets cut off. No one can pass the ball, it shouldn't happen. They get down low, and wisely. Kennedy didn't take the shot. They just will get a shot by Costello, mistake. quick stop. Big mistake by Costello. Grimes quickly with 124 to go. Richie Langtree got this rally going with that big goal. Off to, it'll go now. This is Tony Alexander. 1.12 to go. They've got to get a shot. Hofstra down by two, and we get a whistle. He scores, but after the whistle, timeout, timeout. taken by Hofstra with 1.08 to go. Not a bad timeout. We'll be back in just a moment with the Flying Dutchman trailing 6 to 4.
We are back at West Point, and I'll tell you, Hofstra waking up from their slumber in the fourth quarter, but is it too little, too late, no. Bob? No, I mean, I said, they're within 10 seconds. You score a goal now, you go to the faceoff, you come down in a fast break, you go win. I played the game, we were down by two goals with 56 seconds to go for the club championship, and we won in overtime. We scored two goals in that 56 seconds. So I know that it can happen. Hofstra right now has got to really gear up for a good quality shot, win the faceoff, come down and score again. It can happen. We talked about the balance of UMass. Six different players have scored their goals yeah. today. Well, that's what Greg talked about, the coach. But what I don't like about UMass, if you go by the second half, the score's 4-1 Hofstra's favorite. They stop playing aggressively. Alexander cut off. Langtree. Alexander, Alexander again cut off. Bad pass. Try to force it, and that could be the game right there. Let's see what the call's gonna be. A push, loose ball, push. No possession, so it'll go to, actually that's a gift, because he really did have possession, but. 50 UMass seconds gets the to ball. go, that pass could be the end of the season for Hofstra there. Well, a gallon comeback, Barry, but geez, where was that intensity the first half? No question, Bob. They started to pick it up in the third quarter, and that huh? goal you set with four seconds remaining, in the, uh, at 14.54 when McKeefrey uh, Snuck scored. it behind, did a little backdoor pass and scored a goal. Now oh. Hofstra pick it off, Richie Langtree, 44 seconds ago. Eisenhart, oh. checked held out it, of his stick. Held it too long, you three seconds. guys open. Swing it behind, Lorano, nobody in front now as they take long time getting in another midfield unit. Alexander is in, they hit the oh, pipe. Oh. Lorano, up top. Eisenhart with a shot. Will they get a man closest to the ball? Jared Testa hustling. Oh, still be half the oh. ball. They got a break there. They got a break there is right. 21 okay. seconds left. Hofstra down to. Why on a fast break? Eisenhart doesn't get the ball up. Inexperienced. Freshman and inexperience. a guy open on the corner. He waited too long. He got to shoot in a case like that or dish it off to someone who can't shoot. Richie Langtree intercepted the pass and started the opportunity as we take a look here of the hitting the pipe opportunity okay, here another moments shot. ago. This, I think, is Hofstra's third pipe shot. Comes down, just to hit the top pipe and ricochets off. The goalie's best friend, right, Bob? <laughs> I always said, I'd rather be lucky than good. Don't forget, next week, lacrosse fans, Hofstra University, the site of the quarterfinals. Want to thank Jim Sheehan for his uh, fine help, Mike McComsky from UMass, the, uh, the, the sports information directors. And uh, it's been a great scene up here, Bob Rule. Just yeah, delighted beautiful. to be back working with you again and uh, you. watching this great lacrosse game. Well, you know, Barry, the weather held off. No snow, no rain. I'm happy. Last year, we got a little, a little bit of everything when we did a quarter of the, uh, this game. So here we go. 21 seconds left. Hofstra can't take long to try to get a shot off because they've got to win a face-off after that and try to score two goals in 21 seconds. Ten seconds, seconds. Barry. I'm telling you, it takes ten seconds to tie a game up. They score now and come down on the faceoff, they can do it. All right, John Donowski's club down to the final 26 seconds. Alexander will put it in play against Drum. Alexander cut off. Lost the ball, Drum will pick it up and that will do it as he fires it downfield. Screw it with eight seconds to go, gets checked by Costello and Hofstra's season will come to an end right here. A gallant comeback, but it falls short. It's UMass advancing with a 6-4 win over Hofstra and the Avenge, the overtime loss earlier this year at Hofstra Stadium. A very peculiar game, Barry. First half, it just seemed that Hofstra didn't go to the goal, overcautious. Second half, they played to win, and UMass comes out and plays not to lose, and it's 4-1. And Hofstra's big guns really not a factor. Tony Alexander, Paul Judge shut off the board, and the UMass Minutemen have advanced with a 6-4 to four victory. They will play Princeton next week, and as we mentioned, Syracuse will play the winner of the Notre Dame Loyola game. We'll be back with more from Mikey Stadium in West Point. The Minutemen beat the Flying Dutchman 6-4. Lacrosse Unlimited, with locations in Nassau and Suffolk County, offers both the player and the fan the most complete selection of lacrosse equipment and apparel on Long Island. We're also the area's largest supplier of both Brine and STX equipment. Let our knowledgeable staff assist you in choosing the right gear for your game. Lacrosse Unlimited has it all. We offer the widest selection of custom sticks, including our new mascot series. You create it and we'll make it in less than a week. Lacrosse Unlimited, the ball stops here. Mo, Mo, Mo. Gotta go to Moe's. Gotta go to Moe's, yeah. Gotta go to Moe's. Yeah. You 
got to go to Moe's for the new New York Rangers Liberty merchandise. T-shirts, hats, and jerseys featuring the Rangers' new Liberty logo is now available and only at Modell's. Some items available at the Garden. Got to go to Moe's. This could be your pool. This could be your campus. This could be your library. This could be your studio. This could be your class. This could be your team. This could be your home. This could be your university. This should be your call. Television, it's changing, changing so fast. It's going beyond, beyond anything that anyone have thought was possible. Television, the world, the whole world, all within reach from your own, from TV. Your own TV. Sure, it's more programming options, but it's also movies on demand, video games, and PC online services faster than phone lines can deliver it. It's the future, the future of, of television. How do I know? I have inside information. Things are changing at Cablevision. Stay tuned. All right, and we are standing by with Minuteman head coach Greg Canella. And coach, when you look at this game, uh, pretty much at halftime, things were probably going to your liking, up 5 nothing, then 6 nothing. But the 10-minute mark, things got a little interesting as they will in NCAA lacrosse. Yeah, the Hofstra stepped up their defense, and uh, we started playing a little bit tentative on the offensive end. And, uh, you know, you got to give them a lot of credit for really sticking in there. And they, you know, they could have rolled over, but they didn't. And, uh, you know, we expected that it was going to come at halftime. But yeah. you guys really brought your A effort today. I mean, I mentioned the first half, 5-0, uh, scoring in the last six seconds uh, of the half. This was a minimum performance that uh, you will remember. Certainly we'll remember it. You know, it's the third time that we've won a playoff game in uh, my first, so I will remember it. <laughs> and what does it do? It qualifies you for the uh, the Princeton Bowl. You guys will meet Princeton next week, the number one team in the nation. And I know uh, you guys got to be looking forward to that. It's a heck of an opportunity. Yeah, we're certainly looking forward to it. Most of our guys are from Long Island. We'll get to go home and play a game and, you know, move on in the playoffs. So we're really looking forward to it. There's no doubt about it. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. All right, let's turn to our, our player of the game right here, Mr. Kasselakis, in between the pipes. So, you know, we mentioned this game as a goalie, you, you probably were in a little bit of a lull there as you're up 6 nothing, things are going along smoothly, but then as things will go on across, bing, bang, boom, they came back at you. Yeah, definitely did. It's a fast sport, you know, at any given time, anybody can get on a run, and, uh, you know, Hosh is the type of team that, you know, they play with a lot of heart, and they made one big play, and next thing you know, game started getting closer and closer, but uh, our defense prevailed. You know, if you look for one of the biggest moments of this game, Hofstra cuts it to 6-4, about four minutes left. Right off they come, off the face, off down on a break. But, John, you were right there. You were right on that. A huge save, and that kind of put the momentum out of stop. Yeah, it was definitely a big save because they scored four straight goals. I don't think I even got close to one. I think I overstepped uh, testers, and then uh, that one just settled me back down. And uh, from there on, I wasn't, you know, I was back on my game. Talk about this UMass team a little bit. You guys seem tremendously prepared for this game. You came out fast. You scored three goals in a couple of minutes. You guys look real good. That's uh, that goes with our coaching and our work ethic. You know, we're like a, we're a blue collar team. We come prepared every day, work hard, and uh, you know the staff got us ready. And uh, the rest is history. Well, history takes you until next week, and that will be Princeton. And uh, you know, as you go on to your play in your uh, college career, and as you go on and think about your college days, you're gonna remember playing Princeton. And you guys, uh, tough task ahead. Definitely, they're a great team. They got an unbelievable offensive, you know, solid defensive scheme, and uh, you know, great coaching staff. So we got to just work hard all week. We'll do what we do, and uh, we'll give it our best. All right, the junior keeper was the difference today. Congratulations, John. We'll send it back up to Barry. All right. All right, thank you very much, Jim Cavallo. And this one, history. Bob and I will be back with uh, some closing comments. Uh, Hofstra Flying Dutchman with a late rally, but it falls short. UMass wins at 6-4. to four. We'll return in just a moment. The Hidden Pond Park Sports Camp is sometimes called Camp Everything. 93 acres of fun for boys and girls about to enter grades 1 through 8. Sign up for one week or the whole summer. Transportation available. Take this a summer to remember. Join us at Hidden Pond Park. Registration is limited, so call now. helped David Nolan with a pre-approved mortgage, which gave him the bargaining power to buy his family a bigger house with a lower bid. 
Chase Mortgage Pre-Approvals. They make every one of our 23 different mortgages even more valuable. Another way you're worth more at our bank. Chase, because the right relationship is everything. Now to the winners, the UMass Minutemen. They advance to the 6-4 victory here at Mikey Stadium. On this beautiful Sunday, Saturday afternoon, sun shining on the Minutemen Bob Rule. It shined in the first half, but they were fortunate, really. They played a good first half, but second half, as we pointed out, they were just trying to hang on to that lead. You know, two different ball games, 5 nothing for UMass in the first half, 4-1 for Hofstra in the second half. They really, UMass slowed the ball down, and Hofstra ratcheted it up. I think if that Hofstra had played with the same intensity the entire game, I think they had a good chance of winning this ball game today. Uh, been a little bit more aggressive. I think they're maybe a little too, more, little too cautious, a little too conservative on offense to really have a chance to beat a good defensive team like well, All about. year the Hofstra offense sputtered. It took them a long time to get their first goal as uh, they finally scored in the fourth quarter after being shut out for three quarters. But uh, still a good season for the Flying Dutchman, and we'll have a great week of lacrosse on Long Island next week as Princeton will be down there taking on this fine UMass team. And, of course, Syracuse. We'll see who they'll play Notre Dame or Loyola. Right, and it's going to be great. You'll have... Probably the biggest crowd ever to play lacrosse. All right, for Bob Rule and Mike Candell, Barry Landers saying thanks for watching and a reminder that this afternoon's game has been brought to you by our friends at Canon USA. By Chase, the right decision. And today's game has also been brought to you by Modell. You gotta go to Mo. And our thanks to all the fine people at Modell's, Mitchell and Michael and Rich Reisevich. And by Hofstra University, we teach success. And today's game also has been brought to you from Mikey Stadium this afternoon by the NCAA. And of course, the NCAA is sponsoring so many championship events. And by Cablevision. Good thanks to all the folks at Cablevision on Long Island helping to bring you this extend outstanding Hofstra lacrosse finish to their season. And today's game has also been brought to you by Sports Channel New York. Thanks to Bob DePoto, all the